Welcome, dear students. Welcome to this second lecture on the topic of cash flow statement. Uh, I hope you have uh, understood what we did in our last lecture. So in this lecture, we are going to do even more exciting things like solving problems. <laughs> okay, and I hope you all are doing well and you all are in good health and you all are doing well and uh, you are able to uh, you know understand this subject uh, through these uh, uh, lectures that we have recorded for you all and it is helping you all a lot in understanding these subjects but in case you know you ever feel that uh, that we are not really understanding through this recorded lectures and it is becoming difficult uh, try and get in touch it only only if you are really not understanding and there are concepts that you have uh, because right now there's there's lots available a lot of information is available but in case if you totally feel helpless if you're feeling totally helpless we are still there for you and uh, we will see how best we can help you out with the problems that you are facing subject related problems that you are facing so you are most welcome in that sense okay so don't feel lost and don't feel uh, these are uh, recorded lectures and online classes but i'm not able to understand there are many questions you still have because what i have done is uh, i have uh, really uh, thought over what could be some of the questions students will ask? What will be some of the doubts that students would have? You know, so I kept that in mind. And so in my lecture, as far as possible, I tried to, uh, you know, bring in those uh, explanation or those doubts, the doubts that you will have. But in spite of doing that, you know, we cannot say that we are perfect, but in spite of trying and doing my best in case there are still certain areas where you need some explanation or you're not able to understand, please do let me know. Get in touch. I'm a faculty at the Institute of Hotel Management. You come on our website and try and connect and I will see how best I can help you. Okay. Uh, let's recollect what we did in our previous lecture. Let's start with our lecture for today. Um, by the way, I hope you all are doing well. I hope you all are doing well and uh, are in good health okay uh, let's recollect what we did in our previous lecture in our previous lecture we had a look at uh, what you mean by cash flow statement right what do you mean by cash flow statement then we had a look at um, uh, the meaning of cash flow statement we understood what is a cash flow statement we had a look at the meaning of cash flow statement where we saw one very important point and we said that a cash a cash flow statement is like your cash book that you learned in the first year and yet we also saw the, how it is still different from the cash book that we did in the first year okay? so if you have a very strong base of your cash book of the first year this will be very very simple and if you understood funds flow well then I said in my previous lecture that a cash flow statement will be a cakewalk for many of you Okay, so then we did that. And then we understood the difference between a fund flow statement and a cash flow statement. How a fund flow statement and a cash flow statement is different from each other. So in many areas, they are same. There are so many similarities between a fund flow statement and a cash flow statement. And yet there are so many differences between a fund flow statement and a cash flow statement. So that is again what we saw in detail. And then we saw how to prepare a, a cash flow statement. We just theory, okay? How to prepare a cash flow statement. And uh, again, over there, you must have realized, oh, it's so much similar to a fund flow statement. The only difference while preparing is that uh, uh, two major differences are there. One is for a cash flow statement, we do not prepare a schedule of changes in working capital where okay so that's one difference whereas for fund flow statement we prepare a schedule of changes in working capital which we don't do in case of a cash flow statement all current assets current liabilities are directly taken in the cash flow statement okay that's one and the other difference is 
for a fund flow statement there is nothing called as an opening balance and a closing balance but whereas for a cash flow statement we have an opening balance and we have a closing balance in this way you know opening balance and closing balance a cash flow statement is like your cash book okay because even in cash book you have the opening balance and you have the closing balance but um, in a fund flow statement we don't have opening balance and closing balance okay so these are some similarities and some differences and all those kind of things so let's see what we are going to do in today's lecture and i hope you all are with me and you all are understanding i hope i'm not too fast for you to you know or to get what i'm speaking i'll remember to go slow okay so uh, let's let's see the objectives for today's lecture and then we start solving them Again, my sincere thanks to National Council uh, and my institute as well. National Council for giving me this privilege and my institute for all the support they have given me. Let's see, just one objective for today's lecture, that is to prepare a cash flow statement. In our last lecture, we had learned how to prepare. Today, we are going to prepare. Okay, you will be skilled, you will learn how to prepare and you will prepare a cash flow statement. So let's have a look at our question, our first question for today. Okay, let's read this first question. Okay. Problem number one, this is a first problem in cash flow statement, problem number one. Prepare a cash flow statement from the summarized balance sheet given below. Okay, let's go to the liability side. Share capital. How much is share capital? We have share capital three lakhs and four lakh. There is an increase in share capital. Okay, and it is just like your fund flow, an increase in share capital will indicate issue of additional shares just like your fund flow then we have profit and loss account okay. though we have profit and loss account there is no adjustment there's nothing in this balance sheet that is going to affect the profit and loss account in such a manner that we have to prepare operations uh, operational of uh, profit or loss account so we don't have to prepare uh, operational profit and loss accounts we don't have to calculate funds from operations so you know this because this is the first problem i took a very very simple problem okay so there's no adjustment then we have creditors creditors you know is a current liability come on the asset side plant and machinery 50000 60000 just like fund flow and increase no adjustment given is an indication that there were purchase of plant and machinery. Then we have furniture and fixture. Again, there is an increase in furniture and fixture. Then we have stock. Okay, again, there is an increase. But when it comes to current asset and current liabilities, you will have to remember what a decrease in current asset is, what a decrease in current liability is, what do we do, where do we take, do we take it on the receipt side or do we take it on the payment side. So this is something that you have to remember, okay. Either you understand the concept and if you are not able, every time you cannot think, okay, a sundry credit as a liability, hai, if it has become less, it means we have uh, paid our creditors to so, payment side jayega. in case you are not able to analyze in that manner then what you do is you buy hard the rule okay decrease in current asset and increase in current liabilities go on the receipt side okay increase in current asset and decrease in current liability go on the payment side or you've got to buy hard so then that is sundry debt that is uh, stock then we have sundry debtors and cash okay and please remember many a times i have seen students you know, they forget they are in the habit of funds flow and they forget that a cash flow statement starts with opening balance so this is a question for today and we are going to 
solve this question. Okay, so let's come to our solution. Okay. So this is where we are going to solve our first cash flow statement problem. And I hope you have the problem right in front of you in my last lecture i told you this is the problem we are doing so i, I expect you to write down the problem on your uh, notebook and rule out your cash book and be ready okay so here uh, in the balance sheet they have given us the date by the way this uh, this problem had come in the year 2006 okay in your term and examination 2006 this question is from question paper 2006 so if you see it is 1998 and 1999 so we will write for the year ending 1999 Okay. It's given in the balance sheet. Date is not given in the sentence above, but the balance sheet has the date. Okay, 2000, 1998 and 1999. Like just one minute, just let's have a look at the question. Yes, 1998 and 1999, the date. And this is your term and exam, 2006. It's had come in your... Exam 2006, okay? Come on, let's come back to our problem, okay? Okay, now you have the question in right in front of you and it's a good habit if you can, uh, you know, write down these question and keep. Now, what do we do in a cash flow? Please remember in a cash flow, we start with opening cash balance. So you come on the receipt side and write to opening balance to opening balance. Now go to your question and look at cash. Cash at the beginning of the year is 1,10,000 and at the end of the year is 1,70,000. Okay, so you write 1,10,000. So that's your opening cash balance. So once you have written that, then you go through each item of the balance sheet. But first remember to write the opening balance. Many a time students don't do this and when they come on the asset side and when they come to cash, they say, oh, we forgot to write the opening cash balance. Okay, And many a time students even forget to write the closing balance. Okay, So this is something that you need to remember. Okay, So once you have done the opening balance, now let's go to the liability side of the balance sheet. The first one is share capital. Share capital at the beginning of the year is how much? Three lakhs and at the end of the year is four lakh, which means there is an issue of additional shares. So it's same like your fund flow issue of shares. And how much is one lakh? One lakh is the difference. So there's an increase of one lakh in our share capital. Then we have profit and loss account. Is there an increase or decrease? There is an increase. Profit at the end, beginning of the year was 15,000 and profit and loss account at the end of the year is 30,000, which means during the year, there is an additional profit, okay? So if there is profit, it is receipt. When we make profits, cash is coming into the business. When you issue shares, cash is coming into the business. So it will come on the receipt side. Profit, you can write profit for the year, okay? And that will be the difference, and that is 15,000. Okay, profits for the year, 15,000. What's the next item on the liability side of the balance sheet? It's creditors, and there is a decrease in creditors. Creditor is a current liability. So what is the rule? If there is a decrease in current liability, where do you take it? Do you take it on the receipt side or do you take it on the payment side? Okay. Now understand, creditors, who are creditors? Creditors are people whom we have to pay. We owe them money. We have to pay them this money. So when there is a reduction in creditors, it means we have paid them. So it will go on the payment side, okay? And you have to write it as decrease in 
creditors decrease in creditors it was 1 lakh and it has become 70000 so by how much it has decreased it has decreased by 30000 you understood how you have to do this handle this uh, current liabilities and current assets this is how we will have to handle because we are not preparing the schedule of changes in working capital in a fund flow statement all these current assets and current liabilities were taken in the schedule of changes in working capital here we have to directly take it in the cash flow statement now come on the asset side of the black balance sheet plant and machinery there's an increase in plant and machinery at the beginning of the year it is 50000 and by the end of the year how much it is it is 60000 so there is an increase in plant and machinery and when there is an increase in plant and machinery what does it indicate there are no adjustments so it indicates that we have purchased plant and machinery and so when we are buying an asset what is happening cash is going out of the business okay so it will come on the payment side purchase of plant and machinery i won't be able to write full so i'm just writing machinery in short and how much is that 10000 10000 next we have furniture and fixture even furniture and fixtures have increased which means it is a purchase purchase of furniture i'm not writing and fixture because there's no place to write that okay how much is that 5000 there's an increase of 5000 then we have stock stock is a current asset stock is a current asset stock has increased what do you mean by stock okay your finished stock stock has increased it means we must have uh, we must have purchased more of raw material to prepare this stock stock has increased which means it will come on the payment side and increase in current asset will come on the payment side okay and how much is that increase in stock 85 to 1 lakh 5000 okay so you will have to write it as increase in stock and how much is the difference at the beginning of the year it is 85000 at the end of the year it is 1 lakh 5000 so there's a difference of 20000 next debtors debtors again is a current asset debtor is a current asset and debtors have reduced when there is a decrease in debtors now who are debtors debtors are people who owe us money they have to give us money now if there is a reduction in debtors what does it mean they must have given us money so cash is come into the business you get my point okay so it will come on the receipt side okay decrease in debtors and how much is that a one lakh sixty to one lakh fifty ten thousand decrease in debtors ten thousand so everything is over what is remaining cash is remaining don't forget to write your closing cash balance one lakh okay don't forget to write your closing cash balance and opening cash balance will come on the receipt side closing cash balance will come on the payment side closing balance how much is the closing balance of cash one lakh seventy thousand now let's total up and see whether it tallies okay thirty thousand ten thousand 5000 20000 and 170000 how much do we get 235000 is coming on the payment side so let's see what we get on the receipt side 1 lakh 10000 plus 1 lakh plus 15000 plus 
10,000. Hey, we get 2 lakh 35,000. So 2 lakh 35,000. As simple as that. Okay, but not all cash, cash book problems will be that simple. Okay, so um, you will have to, don't think it will come so simple. It had come, this had come in 2006. So can you imagine, can you imagine just solving this problem and getting, you know, 10 marks straight in your pocket? So I, I really, you know, suggest that really don't be scared of solving problems. You do this and, uh, you know, in, in such a short time, in hardly how many, how much, in 10 minutes you can finish this. Whereas if you divide your question, uh, questions, uh, depending on the number of questions and the time duration for your exam, you have for one question, I think you get 18 minutes and you can actually prepare this in, I think, anywhere in eight minutes, eight to 10 minutes. And you can save your time for other questions, okay, that requires more time. So you can imagine and theory how much you will have to write and you do, there are no chances that you will get full marks for theory. So I suggest that you, uh, as far as possible, try and attempt problems. You get more marks in problems. So, so simple. In 2006, it had come. Okay. Imagine the students who had solved this right got straight uh, 10 marks for this simple problem. But always don't expect such simple problems. Okay. Now let's go to our next question. We will go to question number six. This is a little, little different. Okay. But let's go to that question. Let's have a look at that question. Question number six, right? Okay. Question number six is here. Okay, that's question number six. It's a very, very simple problem. So I have taken question number one and question number six together and then we will do two but then we'll go back to question number two three four like that okay let's read this question from the following balance sheet of mrs zebra hotel limited you are required to prepare a cash flow statement as well as a fund flow statement you know oh, uh, this is from a uh, this is from a book this is from a book and that is why what and the book said and as well as a fund flow statement uh, this particular problem i may not be solving a fund flow with you but there are many problems that i have taken after this first what I'm, I'm not going to touch fund flow we are going to only look into cash flow i want you to get strong into cash flow and then little later the later lectures of a cash flow like maybe our lecture number six seven eight nine ten okay in those lectures any cash uh, flow uh, statement problem that we are going to take we will be preparing cash flow and we will be preparing fund flow we are going to do both you can take the same balance sheet you can prepare fund flow now you know how to prepare fund flow so i will do cash flow with you you can prepare fund flow so simultaneously you can have cash flow and fund flow even in my class when i uh, when we were having regular lectures what i do with my student is i take one problem we prepare cash flow and we prepare fund flow as well same question we prepare the fund flow statement and we prepare the cash flow statement. Okay, but here in this problem, we will prepare only the cash flow statement. Okay, and you can prepare the fund flow statement for this because it's very simple. No need of calculating operational profit and loss. There's nothing, nothing, nothing. Even fund flow, you will directly open a fund flow statement and you prepare a fund flow statement. Okay, come on, let's have a look at the question liability side come to the liability side share capital there is an increase in share capital then loan from bank there is a reduction in the loan which means we have paid off the loan then we have higher purchase what do you mean by higher purchase now when a company wants to buy something and it does not have that amount of money like how we at home we buy on emi basis you know so that is basically what is called as higher purchase so it's a liability okay? it's a liability of the company so there was nothing at the beginning of the year and by the end of the year there is 4000 so it's a liability higher purchase is a liability and it is not a current liability it is not a current liability it's a long term liability then 
again, yeah, probably it will depend if it is less than a year, if you're buying something on hire, which is less than a year. But I wonder why will a company even go to buy something which it can pay off within a year okay, and not have the cash for it. Okay, So generally, higher purchase is a long-term liability. Then we have trade creditors. Trade creditors are nothing but the creditors that have arisen from the trade that you are doing. So here, there is an increase. Okay, Oh, there is an error here. This is not 8,000. 82,000. This is 8,200. Okay, yeah, it is 8,200. Okay, then we have uh, trade creditors. Okay, 7,200 and 8,200. There, there is an increase in uh, so there's a current liability, and when there is an increase in current liability, where do you take it? You take it on the receipt side, and then we have loan from shareholders. There was no loan at the beginning of the year, but by the end of the year, they have taken loan from shareholders. And by now, you know what you mean by loan from shareholders. Debentures are issued to raise loan from the shareholders. So here they have taken loan from shareholders, but they have not represented it as debentures. So we will also not write it as debentures. We will write what is given in the question. Okay. Now come on the asset side asset side hotel building hotel building is 10000 and 11000 hotel building is 10000 and 11000 there is an increase this purchase then hotel land there is an increase of 2000 in hotel land then we have kitchen equipment kitchen equipment have also increased by 1200 then we have hotel vehicle Hotel vehicle, there was no vehicle at the beginning of the year, but by the end of the year, we have a vehicle worth 5,000. So there is an increase over there. And we have bank balance. Okay. Now, this is what you will take as your opening and closing balance. Cash is not given. So you take bank balance as your opening and closing. And where cash and bank both are given, what do you do? How do you handle that? I have a problem where I have... Where both is there and how we will see in that problem, okay? Let's not break our head for that. And then we have sundry debtors. What are sundry debtors? Sundry debtors are your current asset. And when a current asset is increasing or decreasing, there is an increase in current asset. And when a current asset increases, you will have to, you will have to take it on the payment side. So this is your question. And let's solve this problem 2000 and 2001. How did it become 2010? This is 2001. Okay. Come on, let's solve this problem. Okay, come on, rule out your cash flow statement. You are going to solve this problem along with me. 31st March 2000, sorry, one, 2001. Cash flow statement for the year ending 2000, uh, 31st March 2001. You can even write the name of the company. Okay, you can write over here on top. You can write. Uh, yes, it was Messrs. Zebra Hotels Limited. Okay, so you can, when you want to write the name of the company, you can write the name of the company like that. So you have that cash flow statement. Hmm? So, Mrs. Zebra Hotels Limited cash flow statement for the year ending 31st March 2010. So, when you start your cash flow statement, what do you do? Remember to first write the opening balance. Opening bank balance. And what is the opening bank balance? How much is that? 800. 800, okay? That is your opening bank balance. Now let's go to the 
balance sheet and pick up each item. First, we will finish the liability side, then we go to the asset side. Share capital. There is an increase in share capital and an increase in share capital will indicate what? That you have uh, issued fresh, you have issued fresh shares, right? Share capital number 29,600 and you have Okay, you have, uh, there is an increase in share capital. Just let's calculate how much is that? 30,800 minus 29,600, 1,200. Okay. You know, uh, uh, there can be two reasons why your share capital will increase. Now, I want you to really pay attention to what I'm saying. The, there is an increase in share capital can also be profits for the year. If you remember your first year balance sheet, okay, uh, first year balance sheet, there was capital. What are two things that reduces the capital in the business? Drawings and losses. If there is loss, it reduces the capital. If there are drawings, it reduces the capital. Okay? What increases the capital of a business? the net profits, the profits increases the capital of the business, okay? So here, when there is an increase, um, uh, generally this uh, drawings and loss and profit to show uh, an increase in capital to indicate that it, it was the profits for the year, we generally will do that for the balance sheet of a sole proprietor. But if you look at this problem here, they are talking about shares. They are talking about share capital, okay? So we will consider this as issue of shares, okay? When it is just capital given and there is an increase in capital, it can be an indication that that increase in capital are the profits for the year, okay? I'm going to solve one problem like that with you where an increase in capital is not issue of shares, but it is profits of the year. So you, when we will do that, I think it's a problem number two that we will do in our next lecture. So you will understand it better. So here we take it as issue, sorry, issue of shares, okay? And how much is that? 1,200. Next loan from bank it has reduced which means it is payment repayment of bank loan repayment of bank loan and how much is that 1000 1000 as reduced then we have higher purchase okay higher purchase is a liability Higher purchase is a liability and your liability has increased. It is a liability. You have purchased. If You know, now you may be confused, but ma'am, it is purchase. Purchase hai to payment hai na? Nahi. Ye higher purchase hai. We have not paid cash for purchasing this. We have purchased this on hire. Ye hamara liability hai. Okay, so if we have purchased this and if we have cash, then it will go to the payment side and our cash will go out. But what happened now? We have saved our money so much. We have purchased but we have not spent money. So this will come on your uh, receipt side. Higher purchase. And how much is that? 4,000. Okay, directly an increase of 4,000. Then we have trade creditors. Creditors have increased. An increase, uh, increase in current liability is taken on the receipt side. Correct? So, increase in creditors. 
and how much increase in creditors how much is your creditors 7200 and it has increased to 8200 so there is 1000 increase okay 1000 increase in creditors loan from shareholders you have taken loan from shareholders cash is coming in or going out cash is coming into the business so it will come on the receipts loan from shareholders and how much is that 4000 4000 is the loan from shareholder okay now let's go on the asset side of the balance sheet hotel building hotel building has increased by 1000 and hotel building increase means it is a purchase of hotel building by now you know this purchase and purchase means cash is going out purchase of hotel building okay and how much is that purchase of hotel building 1000 Next, we have hotel land. Even hotel land has increased. So it means it is purchase of hotel land. By how much? It was 4,000. It has become 6,000. So there is a purchase of 2,000. So 2,000 rupees is gone out. 2,000 worth cash is gone out of the business. Then we have kitchen equipment. Kitchen equipment have also increased. Okay, and there are no adjustments, nothing. So kitchen equipment have also increased, which means it is purchase. So purchase of kitchen equipment. Okay, and how much is that? Uh, from 16,000, it has become 17,000. 200 so there is an increase of 1200 purchase of kitchen equipment 1200 next hotel vehicle okay there was no vehicle we had no vehicle at the beginning of the year but by the end of the year we are having hotel vehicles which means we have purchased this vehicle and when vehicle is purchased what is coming into the business debit what comes in credit what goes out what is coming into the business vehicle is coming into the business and what is going out of the business cash is going out purchase of hotel vehicle and how much is that five thousand five thousand okay then we have bank balance that we will have to take at the end to write the closing balance then we have sundry debtors sundry debtors have increased sundry debtors have increased an increase in current asset means payment increase in current asset means cash is going out of the business so increase in debtors by how much it has increased 684 680 it has increased by 680 now what's the next item on the asset side of the balance sheet sundry uh, debtors are over trade stock okay trade stock 5000 and 4400 so there is a reduction in stock and what do you mean by there is a reduction in stock when you have stock with you and there is a reduction it means we have sold these stock yeah we have sold it and when we sell stock what is happening cash will come into the business so you take it on the receipt side decrease in stock or you can write even as trade stock anything okay and how much is that 600 okay uh, 5000 and 4400 so the difference is um, 600 all are done don't forget to write your 
closing balance. Don't forget to write your closing balance. Closing balance. How much is your closing balance? 720. 720 is your closing balance. Let's total it up. Come on, you total it up. Total it up and tell me whether it is tallying. <laughs> How will you tell me, but? <laughs> 1,000 plus 1,000 plus 2,000 plus 1,200 plus 5,000 plus 680 plus 720. So it comes to 11,600 on the payment side. Okay, let's have a look at, let's have a look at the um, receipt side. 800 plus 1,200 plus 4,000 plus 1,000 plus 4,000 plus 11,600. So our second problem is also tally. But these were very, very simple problems. Okay, very simple problem. You know what I want you all to do is both question number one and question number two that we have solved. I want you to prepare the fund flow statement for this. Okay, so if, how will you prepare? Wait, let's come. Uh, uh, you all are okay with this? Now, for those who are still solving, I uh, just leave it on there for you for some time. So you can have a look at that and then we will go back to the question. We will go back to the question. We will have a look at what we are solving in our next lecture, what we're going to do in our next lecture and, uh, and how you are going to prepare the fund flow statement for these two problems. Okay. You're done with this. Come on, let's. Okay, let's come back to this question. Okay, so this is our uh, first question that we have uh, prepared. Okay, uh, prepare a cash flow statement from the summarized balance sheet given below. Okay, what I want you to do is we have prepared this cash flow statement. It is very, very simple. What I want you to do is see there is no calculation of operational profit and loss. You don't have to calculate operational profit and loss. What I want you to do is please prepare a fund flow statement it'll be a good you know so even as we are doing cash flow so you do cash flow and you do fund flow you know what happens you get absolute clarity you know and many a times for exams we have seen students get so confused when a comparative balance sheet is asked they land up making common size balance sheet when common size is asked they will prepare comparative and it's perfect it's perfect it is absolutely correct but instead of common size they've make, made comparative you don't get marks okay and if comparative is asked sometimes students land up making common size balance sheet you don't get marks we cannot give you marks because comparative was asked but you have prepared common size so that clarity is needed and many a times i have seen a fund flow statement is asked but a student land up preparing a cash flow statement so they get confused uh, you know between fund flow and cash flow so what i do with my students is when i when i solve this uh, topic i take a question and i do cash flow and i also prepare fund flow then what happens is they come to know the difference between cash flow and fund flow there is clarity there is clarity okay this is what is cash flow and this is what is fund flow so what i want you all to do is i want you to prepare a fund flow statement for this as well so you will have to prepare schedule of changes in working capital and you will have to prepare the fund flow statement so here what you will take under for schedule of changes in working capital just creditors are over here and over here stock debtors and 
cash. Okay, so you take these four items, you prepare the schedule of changes in working capital, and you prepare the fund flow statement. Okay, and um, for this question number six, let's come to question number six. Okay, okay. For this question number six, also we have prepared the cash flow statement, but what you will do is you will prepare the fund flow statement. So very quickly we'll go through this and I will tell you what you need to take for calculation of uh, working capital. So you take trade creditors. Um, yes, yes, only trade creditors. Rest all are long-term liabilities okay so only trade creditors and here you have bank balance sundry debtors and trade stock okay so you have three items on the asset side so you take these three current assets and you take one current liability from there you prepare the schedule of changes in working capital and you prepare the fund flow statement i'm telling you it will be such a good practice and you will definitely score uh, good marks okay okay so this is what we have done and i hope um, you really enjoyed solving these problems and it was not very difficult for you and yes these problems are very very simple problems they have no adjustment but we are not all the time going to solve such simple problems we will be picking up problems that are going to be a little more difficult and which have it, which will have different types of adjustment no two problem will be similar of all the problems that i have picked up all problems are very different from each other so what actually you know for cash flow and fund flow one thing i have noticed what you have to do is you have to just solve different different types of problems and that is how you will get a hang of what uh, you know how to handle funds flow and cash flow different types so even in the uh, handout if you see i have taken all different types of problems so what are we going to solve in our next lecture let's have a look at that question yes this is what we are going to solve in our next lecture problem number Two, okay and this had come for your term and exam 2012 okay, 2012 and how do we handle this so this is a question which says and you can see the balance sheet is so so very small but here two uh, uh, additional information they have given and this is exactly what i'm telling you this one problem and i think it is this next problem that we are going to see uh glessens capital but don't uh, you know let's not focus on uh, problem number three but in this problem number two you know how is problem number two different here capital from this capital see just the word capital is written it is not written as share capital okay so when it is not written as share capital you need to identify that this is the balance sheet of a sole proprietor and it is not the balance sheet of a company capital is not raised by uh, by way of issuing of shares and debentures here the capital is brought in by the owner of the business it's a sole proprietor what happens if it is a sole proprietor how do we handle the capital of a sole proprietor what is the difference when there is a difference in the capital now you look over here capital it is seven lakh thirty nine thousand and six lakhs fifteen thousand there is a decrease what is this decrease where will we take this decrease as okay and so this is what we are going to learn in our next lecture and so it's going to be a very very interesting problem that we are going to solve so and that is what we are going to do in our next lecture okay so you have to look forward for your next lecture to solve this problem now let's come back yes i don't like to end on that note i, I like to end here uh, uh, where it's like connecting more okay so that is what we are going to do in our next lecture so what have we done in today's lecture we have picked up two 
simple problems, yet they were different from each other. And we have prepared a simple cash flow where there were no adjustments. We didn't have to open any non-current uh, 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 non assets and liabilities account. Neither did we have to calculate operational profit and loss. Okay, so we learned how to prepare a cash flow statement. In our next lecture, we are going to again learn how to prepare a cash flow statement, but with a difference where we will have to open up individual accounts and we will also have to calculate probably the operational profit and loss. We will see when we will solve that problem, you will understand. So look forward for your next lecture. That problem is quite an exciting problem and it had come in your um, question paper question paper problem. So I will see you all again very soon in our third lecture, in the third lecture of cash flow statement. Okay, so stay safe, study, study, okay, study. You need to study, work hard, work hard. You will reap the benefits of working hard. Okay, thank you. I'll see you soon.